Please, uh, a minute or two. Keep it a minute-ish. Yep. Nice. Oops. Excuse me. Hi, right, my name is Sam Bellamy. I'm with Stand Up America. Uh, I'm here to talk about an issue that's kind of up here for the city. It's uh, um, about how much money we're spending. Uh, you said we have shortfalls coming. We have budget issues. Uh, but we're not addressing the issue of how much money we're paying our elected officials. We pay you 170000 which is 10000 more than the governor of, the, of Washington State. Uh, there's hundreds, uh, thousands of kids out there starving right now. There's projects that need to get done out there. We're, we're not even addressing closely the concern of how much you have. A, there's a hundred of your staff that gets paid a lot, over 100000 And if you include their staff and their expenses, it's like $20 million to, to, to take care of that. If we just took half of that, we could fund a lot of projects, a lot of concerns these people have. So my question to you is, why is your, but, why is your salary, which is 170000 not even on the chopping block or not even a discussion, why can't it be brought down to the average American, average Seattle? I, I'll be more specific. Why isn't it brought down? So by the way, I'm asked this question at every town hall. <laughs> no, seriously, and the next one too. So, and so we'll, see how, we'll see if I'm getting any better at the answer. Um, so I do make about... Um, I think it's 169. You can round up to 170. That's fair. That's probably the best salary I've ever made in my life. Um, I was a lawyer in private practice. I quit that job to form a nonprofit. I have uh, three kids in Seattle Public Schools, um, 17, 15, son tomorrow, and uh, 12, two of them at Nathan Hale, one of them at Salmon Bay. They're heading to college soon. Uh, by law, I can't change my, con my salary. But I made a, that's, it's written into the law. Uh, but I can, uh, and I do donate 10000 a year to uh, charities. And I said to my wife, over and above what I normally contribute, you know, going to dinners and events and things like that, but just the end of the year, 10 k And the instruction to my wife was find 10, or find, eight, find nonprofits in the city of Seattle that provide direct services to residents on you know, the types of things we spend government money on. And that's what she's done. And I don't pick them, she picks them, and then she lets me know who she picked, and she does it with the kids, which I think is a good learning opportunity for the kids, too. So the Downtown Emergency Service Center, um, uh, Service uh, Orion Youth Center, which is for runaway teens, REWA, Refugee Women's Alliance, and that's what she does. Um, we have, uh, uh, we went and, uh, <coughs> At my office, we pay less than the prior administration does, and we've been very uh, stingy at, at salaries overall with department heads. We've tried to be cheaper about that uh, to some consternation to me. We've gone in and uh, um, renegotiated all 17 of our contra 17 union contracts. They got a guaranteed minimum 2% wage increase under their contract. They all opened up their contracts and took actual inflation instead of 2%. When we've made layoffs, we've gone twice as deep into the management ranks. There's about 1,000 employees who are kind of senior level, about 900 who are senior level and managers. And we've gone twice as deep into them as into the people that are the, you know, the line workers and the regular workers because we're trying to reduce the layers of management. So we take those concerns really seriously, and we have tried to reduce the amount of money we spend on management and overhead. We've restricted travel and training accounts as well for people who want to travel to some far some faraway place for, for training. So we've worked to restrict our spending. Um, I suppose I could take half salary. I suppose I could. I mean, I could do that. Um, and I just hope people understand, you know, this is why I, you know, I say, you know, I'm not, I didn't get into this job because of uh, the salary, right? Um, and I'm not a career politician. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, who knows, maybe I'm not going to have a career in politics. <laughs> right? I'll find out. But I'm going to work really hard for four years. And uh, my wife's kept her bookkeeper job just in case. She's a bookkeeper for a contractor. <laughs> She's hanging on to that one just in case. <coughs> Thanks. <coughs> yeah. Hi. My name is Alex Zimmerman, and I represent Stand Up America. I hear this zone from mayor for a long time. Guys, for the last 30 years, we've fallen and fallen and fallen. In the same zone, we listen again and again and again, and nothing changed. Uh, this aristocrat, you know what this means, belong to one percentage. You collect right now all us money. We're talking about trillion dollars. This is not only his problem. This problem what is we have around all United States. 
150 million people totally poor. 80% of Americans make less than $30,000. It's enough only for minimum life. When we will solve changes, is guys, when we're talking only together, nothing will be changed. When you not stand up together with everybody, it don't change this aristocrat who make a ton of money. It absolutely don't have sense why these people make so many money. I'm professional business consulting. I don't understand what is he doing for $170,000 when 30 years ago, same man, same mayor make everything for $60,000, for example. I don't understand where it's different. Why is management have so many money? So when we want changes, we need changes from beginning, from head. When nothing will be changed from head, nothing will be changed for another 30 years. I'm absolutely sure. When we're only talking together, nothing will be changed. When you're talking, when everybody stand up and start talking, it will be changed. And I guarantee you 100 percent. You not stand up, nothing will be changed in my generation and maybe another generation. If you understand this? It's exactly what is we come and what is we talking. We need changes. No changes, nothing will be bad, better. It will be worse and worse and worse. We're right now in 44 level, from 5 to 45, close to Uruguay, or something like this. Thank you very much. So when we will see changes, real changes, my question very simple, again and again and again. Thank you. Was that, was that, so there was a question. There was a question, and boy, <coughs> If you ask the question, when will you see changes, you know, that, that, that kind of makes me want to go. And I don't think everybody here wants me to talk about that. I mean, that's why I'm in this. I mean, that's why I volunteered in my neighborhood. That's why I volunteered for the Sierra Club for so many years. That's why I started a nonprofit. That's why I ran for mayor. I mean, I, I just want to say very fundamentally, I believe that we are at one of these inflection points, one of these turning points. You know, we kind of saw it with Occupy the Occupy movement, you know. I worked for a congressman years and years ago out of college, um, and he had this line that he said, government is like a shoe. You don't notice it unless it doesn't fit, yeah. right? You don't notice government unless it doesn't fit. And obviously it doesn't fit in front of this gentleman's home, right, He's, you know, and he notices. And, but we saw a situation where 56% of Americans were identifying, I have a friend who does national who know, follows national stuff, and he told me this. 56% of Americans identified with either the Tea Party or the Occupy movement. A majority of Americans. So a majority of Americans, and they, they have different viewpoints, and I, pro I think there's more Occupy sympathizers in Seattle than Tea Party sympathizers, but there's, there's something in common, which is government isn't fundamentally working for the people the way it should. And I mentioned this in my opening remarks, just a very little bit at the end. You know, we look at 30 years of increasing income inequality. You know, we look at the, the lingering effects of historic injustice. You know, that minority groups, employment, education, incarceration rates, it, it's, you know, it's, it continues. <coughs> and we look at the environmental issues we face of global warming. You know, we don't talk about it as much now because the economic needs became so paramount. But the scientists tell us it's getting worse. You know, it's the worst case scenario is always a little worse than the last worst case scenario. So none of these problems have gone away. And, and I do, I fundamentally believe, and this is why I'm highly motivated, and I mentioned my kids earlier. You know, I, when my kids say, Dad, what did you do 20 years ago when you knew about this, if I'm so lucky to be alive 20 years? I want to say to them I did everything I could. So I do fundamentally believe there's a lot of things we, we still have to work on.